As was evident during the debate, um, it left no doubt that Rigathi Gashagwa is not only a danger to Kenya, uh, but also a risk to national security. His callousness, um, his carelessness, his recklessness in terms of looking at Kenya through the prism of uh, a corrupt man was a very evident during the debate. Um, his justification of having been accused of, uh, of pilferaging about 200 million shillings was the greatest act of um, lack of remorse um, towards the Kenyan people. And it is very sad that as Kenyans continue to suffer and sleep hungry and the cost of commodities rise due to the very ill of corruption, Rigathi Gashagwa continues to justify the very act of corruption that he has practiced over the years without any remorse. Rigathi Gashagwa is not a perfect man, you know. Um, he's involved in various contradictions in which um, he claims to be a hustler, um, whereas he's a very filthy rich individual. Um, and by for all practical, practical purposes, um, he's been pushing against what he calls dynasties, yet he himself is a dynasty um, who inherited his brother's uh, political power and seats, um, having been his um, brother's right-hand man as they um, terrorized um, Nyeri County. Uh, may his brother's soul rest in peace, uh, but his brother was a good man. But the moment Derito Gashagwa reared, reared his ugly head into the Muranga County, um, things started going south. Uh, Rigadi Gashagwa also served as an oppressive provincial administrator um, at a time when um, those who served under him uh, claimed that he was a ruthless enforcer of the rules against Chang'a brewing. And what that means is that um, the common man, you know, who cannot afford beer, the common man who cannot afford beer um, went a lot in the hands of Rigathi Gashagwa. So if we talk about um, Rigathi Gashagwa, we are talking about a guy who um, is district officer. Uh, enforced the law um, to the detriment of the common man. So he will be hurting William Rudolph's um, hustler narrative because uh, there's a history to that. People in Kakamega are complaining about him. People in the various places he served are, you know, are asking for justice, you know, because he really wrecked their lives, you know, as they had to part with uh, thousands, if not hundreds of shillings of meagerly earned resources. He's also currently involved in a 12 billion money laundering case um, in which um, he in total disregard of the taxpayer uh, monies. Um, he is accused of uh, laundering that money and uh, you know if evading taxes and stuff like that and uh, there's there's a lot of things going on within the courts and so the question arises whether a person who is at risk of being convicted um, currently at um, almost becoming the deputy president with powers uh, to influence the appointment of the very um, uh, very intelligence and investigative agencies that are likely to investigate him. So you wonder whether he's going to recuse himself from assisting the president in the appointment of, uh, of, of, of in the appointment of such critical positions. And uh, there's also the element of him being involved in all these cases being a target of blackmail by those who know so much about these cases and god knows you know in case him and deputy president william ruto do not get along 
if he doesn't get along with his president there's likelihood that he could be blackmailed who knows you know this is life and these are people and you can't trust them